So today I want to talk about Cam Newton recruiting Auburn football as it relates to New England Patriots and Bill Belichick and all that's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You got to help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, Ken Folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time today. I want to talk about Cam Newton, but first a little bit about Bo Jackson and Auburn, right? So like Bo Jackson coming out of high school is a Paul Bunyan story, is a Pecos Bill story, is a John Henry story. This dude is a walking tall tale. As a matter of fact, when you see like the ESPN 30 for 30, like the first 10 minutes actually read like fiction and yet no, every one of those stories is absolutely true. To say that someone is like Bo Jackson is to say they can quite literally do anything. And the closest things that we have to that are like Bubba Chuck up in Tidewater, a.k.a. Allen Iverson, Kyler Murray out in Arizona now, coming up in Allen where he could hit a baseball a million miles, could throw a baseball a million miles, could throw a football over the mountains a la Uncle Rico. And then all of this comes back to Bo Jackson. As much as we like two sports stars, Bo Jackson was the first Three sport letter winner in the Southeastern Conference in 20 years when he did it back in the early 80s, right? Coming out of high school, this dude was so legit at every sport. In high school, the dude jumped, triple jumped 48 and like a quarter feet. He ran the 100 yard dash in 9.54 seconds, which is a state record at the time. But what I love most is like his baseball prowess in high school. He hit 493 with 20 home runs. And then Along with his 92-mile-an-hour fastball, he threw two no-hitters, and he hated pitching because he said, hey, look, it's boring. I just sit there and I throw the ball. Yikes. But when you get to Bo Jackson at Auburn, there's so many stories you could tell, right? Pat Dye's got a million of them. We think Bo Jackson ran a 4.12 40-yard dash, and this is coming out of the mouth of the time of the National Football League Scouting Combine Director, I would say that's what we got him at. We got him at 4-1-2, which seems insane. And it seems like nobody's been that fast. Now, the NFL had been using laser timing since 1999, right? But Bo Jackson ran track. And Bo Jackson ran 6.18 in the 55-meter dash, which if you wanted to make that into a 40-yard dash, means he runs it in about 4.11 seconds. Problem with that is it's probably not true because you're counting each one of those yards as if they were run at the same speed. And we know that your first step is not going to be as fast as your seventh step and so forth. But still, it is within reason that Bo Jackson could go sub 4-2, which would make him the fastest dude to run the 40-yard dash. Even faster than John Ross, even faster than anybody you can think of. Matter of fact, this is a good place to point out. I went through like the top 54 NFL 40-yard dash times at the Combine. Not a white dude in the list. Not a single white dude. And we're talking about all the way to 429. As a matter of fact, the best I could find was Troy Apke. And there was another dude, another white dude, real fast, that also ran 434. So both of those dudes in a 435 range. So it's a good chance that Neither one of those dudes ranks inside the top 60, let alone top 75. But Bo Jackson was able to do this at like 220 pounds and could bench 400 pounds. Bo knows everything. Okay, that's why the commercial was there. And he was the best Auburn football player to ever suit up for the university, or excuse me, for Auburn University. And then Cam Newton came along. Cam Newton is so good that you have to point him out as a better football player than Bo Jackson. Now, you could talk about injuries, and you could talk about what position they played and the value of a running back in 2010 versus the value of a running back in the 1980s versus the value of a quarterback in the 1980s versus the value of a quarterback in 2010, also add in to their Gus Malzahn. But Cam Newton's 2010 Heisman winning season quite literally puts him up there as the greatest Heisman winner of all time and one of the greatest college football players of all time. He is, for me, the greatest college football player of all time, even ahead of Barry Sanders, 
who was absolutely stupid in 1988 and for some people is the greatest running back of all time and greatest college football player of all time. Better than Joe Burrow's 2019 Heisman season where he throws for like 5,000 yards, 60 touchdowns, six INTs in the college football playoff era. Cam goes to the NFL and unlike Bo Jackson, is already proving to be a pro football Hall of Famer before we get to the 2016 season. Why? Because he won an MVP and a Heisman Trophy, and he carried that Carolina Panthers squad with a really great defense to a Super Bowl and damn near won it, right? Then we're looking at the last three years of his career in which he's had two shoulder injuries that really limit him and a Liz Frank injury that he suffered against, of all people, the New England Patriots in preseason last year. And now we have Cam Newton, who signed a deal worth $7.5 million in incentives, could make up to $7.5 million. The floor is $1 million for him. At a time when we're really looking at Chase Daniel going, wait a second, that dude got a three-year, $13 million contract to be a backup? Man has got more finesse than Sam Bradford, though Sam Bradford signed a $50 million deal coming straight out of college. But Sam Bradford also won a Heisman Trophy and played in the National Championship game. Chase Daniels has done nothing of the sort. So I'm going to make Chase Daniels into a much more finesse-heavy dude. Also add to this that the New England Patriots paid Antonio Brown $9 million to play one game and to go away. Okay. Cam Newton's not even going to get close to that. And when you look at New England's cap situation, you come to understand they only had like $1.8 million in cap money. So they might actually have to like walk away from dudes like Rex Burkhead if Cam Newton performs to the incentives in this contract. Also means that the two dudes at the top of the depth chart are two dudes from Auburn. No, Brian Hoyer is not going to be included in this competition. We've seen what Brian Hoyer is capable of. It ain't, it ain't what Cam Newton is capable of, and we haven't seen what Jared Stidham is capable of, but we were all operating under the impression until Cam Newton signed his contract on Sunday that Jared Stidham was probably going to get the nod for the New England Patriots at quarterback. This is on a quarterback depth chart with Brian Lewerke, another Michigan State dude, and Jamar Smith, who came out of La Tech, whose claim to fame is thumping Miami in the walk-ons Independent Bowl, Independence Bowl, which is named after a bar in Louisiana, and shut him out 14-0. So that's what Cam Newton has to go up against. And if Cam Newton can be even half as good as he was in 2015 and half as good as he was in 2010, we're still talking about one of the great seasons that we could see from any quarterback, right? Now, I understand why you might be out on the whole Cam Newton experience, but I think you're really only hurting yourself here. And if you want to make it into what Belichick is going to do or not going to do, I think you're also missing the point right now, which is that Cam Newton in a New England Patriots uniform in the do-your-job place could transcend it. It could be something different. He could fall in line a la Randy Moss or Darrell Rivas, and it'd be a great one-year wonder, and we'll all be better for it if we get football. And I think we're going to get football, especially pro football, because they seem to be a especially interested in playing this season. But what I found to be most interesting about all of this is what is Gus Malzahn going to say and do with all of this? Because if you're Gus Malzahn, you got to be using the hell out of this when you're recruiting. It's not as if he didn't just pick up Demetrius Davis from North Shore like a couple of weeks ago, who is really lightning in a bottle and one of the more flashy 2021 players, let alone quarterbacks, in this class. And then he brought in Kalen Newton, who is Cam Newton's little brother, who set the world on fire at Howard and probably still there if they, one, treated him right and two, would have recruited around him. Kayla Newton just outperformed Howard. Remember, Howard launched the biggest point spread upset in modern memory when they beat UNLV. And he's really one of the best quarterbacks we've seen coming out of black college football in a very long time, which leads me back to this idea of Cam Newton and what he might be able to do at 32, 33 years old, which is what Steve McNair was able to do at 32, 33 years old, which is be a Pro Bowl quarterback. Cam Newton is every bit as talented as Steve McNair was. And Steve McNair was cold at Alcorn State. Just absolutely cold. Might be the greatest player to ever wear a nine jersey, if you're looking that up. 
But all these feats that Bo Jackson, Cam Newton have accomplished and what could be in store if Jared Stidham were able to beat out Cam Newton leads me to thinking we're undervaluing Gus Malzahn altogether here. I get that he's eccentric. I get that he rubs the fan base at Auburn the wrong way. And I get that his offense feels like it's gimmicky, like a putt-putt mini golf course. But when the NFL comes looking at his quarterbacks, they usually turn out to do something. And if Jared Stidham is the worst of these dudes that actually gets a shot to be a starting quarterback, we'll know something. But I am interested to see how this plays at Auburn, how this plays with Belichick, who's friends with uh, Alabama head coach Nick Saban, and what, if anything, is made of this when it comes time for Kalen Newton to usurp Bo Nix in what could be a precursor for Cam Newton usurping Jarrett Stidham. You can see how all these lines are very interesting, but I needed to point that out. All right, that's it for me. Deuces.